And look at this big puppy here. Oh, you've got to get in the shot, Annie. Come on. Come here. How are you? You a good girl? She's a sweetheart. Oh, yeah. When I was a fire chief, I had a uh, Facebook hashtag, Puppers Not Politics. Today, I got to get out into the country where I'm more comfortable out here in Bel Air, Maryland with Joshua Berry from Precision Drone Services. So, you didn't start out really doing this, of course, like a lot of people. What were you doing all your yeah, life? Nobody has a background flying ag drones. <laughs> That's all new to everybody. Uh, so I started, and I'm still doing it. I'm a photographer, videographer for 25 years. Mm -hmm. So uh, lots of events and headshots, portraits, stuff like that. And I don't know if it was five, six, seven years ago, whenever drones started surfacing for our industry, for photography and videography, I added that into my uh, list of services. Learn to fly drones that way. Online gaming helped learn to fly drones as well. It's all the same controls, right? I started moving away from drones for photo and video. Not that I don't still do it in my photography, videography biz, but I started doing things like deer recovery, yeah. lost pet search and rescue, stuff like that. And that kind of put me in that space, you know, like the deer recovery, that's kind of ag, right? And that puts me in that field and gets me in that lane with these drones. And a new friend of mine named Jay Stewart, shout out to Jay. He calls me up. He's like, yo, Josh, you seen these ag drones, what they're doing? And you know, I was like, yeah, I got my eye on them. I'm just not sure if I want to get these. I'm telling you, you got to get into this. You know, they're they're the next greatest thing for farming. It's a great tool. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So tell me a lot of the benefits that the drones have been uh, bringing to you and farmers with the business. So perfect example is this past wheat season. We got a lot of rain up here in the north. Anybody up here in this area, and I think even like Ohio too, uh, I'm not sure what other parts of the country, but in the northeast, we were getting tons of rain. And the problem with that is farmers can't get their rigs into the field. And then on top of it, all that wet weather brings on disease and their crops still need sprayed, but if they can't get their rigs into the field. That's a problem. Well, in comes the drones. And my phone was ringing off the hook. I mean, I probably could have done uh, easily another thousand acres with all the phone calls we had. But, you know, these farmers were able to get the uh, fungicides on their wheat and the, the fertilizers into the wheat, the insecticide onto the wheat um, to keep the, the crops healthy. And everyone's been real pleased. Let me just say this. With wheat, you got a short window to spray that wheat, especially in the Northeast. There's a lot of fields that just aren't feasible for helicopters and airplanes. It's not a dig on them. You know, they're they're great for what they're great for, and this is just another tool. But I went out there to Ohio to help him spray some pumpkins. And if you've ever done pumpkin fields, it's a weekly spray for these pumpkins. They knew immediately the benefit would be, hey, I don't have to drive on my own crops, right? I don't have to crush these pumpkins, which is money. Because now if they do get stuck, now it's taking time to get that that piece of equipment back out of that field, but then also reducing their their labor cost. Water. Water, 80, fuel. Easily 80% less water. Oh, wow. Yeah, right? And it was like a little, t there, the field was maybe 30, 40 acres, but there was like a 10 acre area. They, it was just overtaking it. Mm -hmm. And I sprayed, uh, sprayed some herbicide for him, did a real good job. I checked in with him like a week later. He said, oh yeah, he said, it's gone or it's dying. And then I'm hoping by next season to put in the back of my truck a, uh, a tender unit. So yeah, we're gonna be creating jobs too. Wow, that's so great to hear. And tell me about some of the challenges you've had um, getting into this this new profession. It's expensive right off the bat. I mean, you, you gotta have a pocketbook and a, and a plan, a, write a business plan. That's the good thing about this community that I've found is that we're all very concerned with the reputation of the industry. We all want to do a good job. So everybody I've asked questions to in terms of looking up to them as a mentor and having a question about how to do something the right way, there's always somebody ready to jump up and help you and answer your questions. Make sure you're doing it right. You're not out there giving us a bad name. And then of course there's people, which I've done. I paid for training. I went out to Ohio and paid for training. I've had people come down from New York and did consulting with uh, and asked a lot of questions. Invest in yourself. You know, this is not a hobby. This isn't this isn't going to your national park. No, nothing wrong with that. It's beautiful stuff, but these are important tools for agriculture. I don't 
believe anytime soon drones are going to replace airplanes right. and helicopters and ground. They all have a very specific purpose. Right. But as far as where this is going to go, this isn't going to stop. I don't see it stopping. Um, I think you're going to see more and more uses for these things. I mean, I'm not talking about the pilots, but the greenhouse owners. They're eating it up and they're keeping the guys that are doing it busy. So there's that. Heck, I, f I filled a guy's deer feeder station on the eastern shore with 800 pounds of corn. Oh, wow. It took him two days to do it normally. And he called me up and it took, I did it in two hours of flying, 800 pounds of corn. So just, you're gonna see more and more uses for these things. I've seen guys use the uh, strap power washers to them, right? Yeah. Yep. Is that solar fields yes. too, right? Gleaning on those. Gleaning them, right, yeah. So the, the same, some of the same stuff that's used for greenhouses, you can use that for solar fields. You spray it on, then the rain comes and washes it off and cleans the solar panels. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then of course you spray parking lots for weeds stuff like that uh the solar fields for weeds too i mean it just keeps growing gypsy moth right stuff like that too because a lot of the state contracts with the helicopters and stuff the state's not going to subcontract to a private business to fly for private land so there's a lot there's a big market in that too so great to see the the future world that drones are able to bring with safety efficiency just you know one of the reasons why I'm at DJI is our drones save lives, but they also make the world a better place. So it's great to see. Um, any last thoughts? I hope that Washington DC goes through and sees that all the hugabaloo about these drones is is just, just that, you know, it's pretty much nonsense how important these are to the industry now. I mean, they, they, they have a very strong grip on agriculture and we don't want to let it go. We don't, they're very useful.